Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Love Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another quick video. Today, we're out here taking a look at this 2014. This is a Kia Sedona. Uh, the issue with this vehicle is that the owner lost her keys. And so I think what happened was uh, they stole her purse. Her keys were inside of the purse. And so now she's worried that somebody out there has her keys and she doesn't want them being able to open the door, start the vehicle up and of course, either get in there, steal something or steal the vehicle itself. So the plan today is that we're going to be rekeying these locks. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure that the original key no longer works. Now, she actually had an extra key. So we do have a working key for this vehicle, but again, she doesn't want that key uh, to be able to open or start the vehicle anymore. Now this is a Kia. And if you guys didn't know, the Kias don't have any transponders in the key. So uh, there's no programming involved in this. Basically what we're gonna do is we're removing the ignition lock cylinder and the door lock cylinder on the driver's side. Basically the only two lock cylinders on this vehicle. We're gonna open up those lock cylinders and we're gonna move some wafers around in there so that we can change the code of the key. We're gonna cut two new keys and then she's gonna be on her merry way. Now, I did already actually start this job. To be honest with you guys, I didn't know if I was actually gonna film this. Some of this information, you know, you really gotta be careful about what you share on the internet. Now. I'm not gonna show you guys the license plate, the VIN number, none of that on this vehicle, of course, for safety reasons, but I figured maybe I can show you guys the process of how we recode the locks. So if I take you inside the vehicle, you guys can see I already started this. I went ahead and I pulled the ignition lock cylinder out already. Um, basically, all I had to do was remove a couple panels here. I pulled the uh, little bezel around the cluster. Really simple to do, there's only a few screws. And this one, the ignition is actually in the dash right here, uh, but it was really no biggie. There's a little hole up here at the top um, it's hard to see, but basically there's a hole right there. And what you got to do is you got to put the key in the accessory position or on position. That's going to allow you to put a little pick tool into the hole at the top of the lock cylinder so that you can remove it. So over here in the back of my truck, you guys can see that I already have the lock cylinder pretty much disassembled. I'm sorry. I didn't film that for you guys, but basically, um, this lock cylinder, and this is the original key here that works, which, um, we'll decode that here in a minute so that we can, um, figure out which wafers we're going to move around. But basically in order to take this thing apart, Part, um, this lock cylinder went inside of this assembly here and on the back side it was held in with a little snap ring this little guy right here so there's a little snap ring that holds it on the back side and then you also have to remove uh, pop off this little plastic piece that goes on the front really simple to do the other piece that I had to remove was this piece right here it was a little face plate that went on front of the uh, lock cylinder and it basically just twists on there so all you got to do is twist it and pull it off and then you're able to pull this lock cylinder out that's basically it once I got the lock cylinder out of this case right here um, you guys can see we have an eight cut uh, key so we have eight wafers on this key now this key is holding these wafers in these wafers are spring loaded so there's little springs inside each wafer and if you pull this key out and you're not careful these will go flying everywhere so let me put the camera on a tripod and i'll go ahead and pull the key out okay so there's our lock cylinder with the working key again you guys can see that these wafers are all nice and flush uh, that means that this key is the correct cut so when i pull out this key uh, you can see uh, the keyway for this one is an HY15 Hyundai key. And so, again, this is the working key. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving a few of these wafers so that we can have a completely uh, different cut key and so that this key will no longer work. Now, let me go ahead and take you guys to the Dolphin machine. That's what we're going to use to uh, decode this key. Now, we could just go ahead and pull all these wafers out, but... I like the dolphin machine because we can decode this key and then we can have a visual up on the screen and I can show you guys what we're going to be moving around. Okay, so moving over to the dolphin machine, you can see we have the original key in the clamp. We're going to hit decode the key and that's basically going to trace the key and it's going to give us our cuts. So if you take a look here, the tracing pin is going to go around the key and it's going to give us our measurements. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the results. All right, guys, so up here on the screen, you can see we have our decoded key. Now, before we continue, I would like to mention that yes, I did change some of these numbers around. Of course, I'm not gonna show somebody's actual key code on the internet for obvious reasons, but 
Anyways, you guys will get the basic idea. This is essentially what our key looks like here. And so what we're going to do is we are going to move some of these wafers around in order to create a brand new key. Now, whenever I do wafer swapping in order to create a new key code, there are a couple of small rules that I like to follow. For one, I like to make sure that if I'm going to be swapping wafers, I want to make sure that they are at least one digit apart from each other in size. And so basically what I mean by that is that I'm not going to be swapping a number two for a number three or a number one for a number two. You know, those sizes are just too close to each other. And it is possible that, you know, even after swapping those wafers, you may actually still be able to turn the lock with the original key. So basically, if you're going to be swapping wafers, you know, if you have a one, you're going to want to swap it for something like a number three or a number four. And if you have a number two, you're going to want to swap it over for something like a number four or a number five. You guys get the basic idea. The second rule I like to follow is that I do want to make sure that they are spaced at least two wafers apart. You don't really want to swap two wafers that are right next to each other. Not that it couldn't work if you did that, but in my opinion, it's better to give them a little bit of space. So when I take a look at these cuts on this particular key, you know, there's a lot of different places that we can start with. I mean, if you look over here, you can see we do have a group of threes. So we have this three, three, three. It might be good to kind of break this up and maybe take, uh, let's say this three right here and then maybe swap it for, uh, let's say this number one right here, which is the third wafer if you're counting from left to right. And so if we're gonna swap these two, again, we have a one and a three, so they are spaced apart well enough when it comes to the size. So yeah, we could go ahead and change this third wafer from a one over to a number three. And so we're gonna swap that with the sixth wafer, which was this number three, and we're gonna change that to a number one. And as you guys can see, after doing that, we are left with a completely different key. Now we could go ahead and move some other wafers around, but honestly, looking at this, I think it might be perfect for what we're trying to do here. And so, yeah, basically the plan is I'm going to go ahead and go to the lock cylinder and then we're going to swap over the third wafer, which originally was a number one. And we're going to swap it over for the sixth wafer, which was a number three. So in the end, this is what our key should look like. Now let's go ahead and move over to our lock cylinder, swap these two wafers around. We'll cut a new key and see how it works. So here's our lock cylinder. And I'm basically going to swap the third one with the sixth one. So we're going to take this one out right here. And that's a one cut. And then there's our little spring. Let me put it down so we don't lose it switch that with the sixth one this is going to be the sixth cut right here and that is going to be a three let's go ahead and put the spring in place we're going to put that three right here as the third cut the three is the third cut we're going to put the one as the sixth cut. And so let me go ahead and cut a key for this and make sure that they all sit flat. So here's our new freshly cut blade. And right now in the lock cylinder, we have the old key. So as you guys can see, the third wafer and the sixth wafer are sticking up. They're not flush. So this key will not turn the lock anymore because we swapped out those wafers. So now I'm gonna pull this old key out and then we're gonna stick our new freshly cut key into the lock cylinder and we're gonna see if these wafers are flush. Check it out. You see how nice and flush these are? That's what we want to see. So now we have a completely different key. Okay, so now that we have a working key, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this lock. I'm just going to go ahead and slide this back into the case. Okay, guys, so real quick, let me show you how I was able to get uh, this piece off of the front of the lock cylinder because uh, it can be a little bit confusing uh, trying to figure out how to get it off and also get it back on. So uh, basically, you guys can see it's got these little kind of hooks and so it's meant to be twisted off. And so uh, to get it back on, let me show you, we're gonna push this whole assembly kind of forward inside 
of this uh, this outer piece. So we're pushing the inner piece out. We're not pushing the lock cylinder out. This is staying in. I haven't put the snap ring in yet, but I'm not gonna push on the lock cylinder. I'm basically just pushing on the outside here. And then you can see we have some notches. And then if you just, uh, you know, remember the orientation of how this went on there, cause it's got these little marks on there. And basically you just kind of put it back on. So we're gonna get it to line up. We'll push it in there. Oh, my lock cylinder came out a little bit. Again, I didn't put the snap ring in there, so that was my fault. Well, let me show you real quick. In order to push the lock cylinder in all the way, uh, this little arm right here, you wanna lift up on that, and that's going to release the tension on this rod. I'm sorry, my bad, scratch that. <laughs> don't push this lever up, push it down. My bad, I'm sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. I think it's because I'm trying to look through the, uh, through the camera here when I should be looking at what I'm actually doing. So yeah, push down on this lever, and it's gonna release the tension on this little tab right here, and that's gonna allow you to push it in, and so. Once we release the tension on that, we can push the lock cylinder all the way in. You can see back here, we can fit our snap ring on there. And so I'm not gonna do that just yet. I'll do that in a second. We're gonna push this piece back out and we're gonna slide our little piece back on there and we're gonna hook it. So now it's nice and hooked right there and then we'll push it back in and now it's reassembled. And now you can pull the key out, you know, if you want. But we're gonna go ahead and put that snap ring back on the, uh, back of the lock cylinder and that's gonna hold the lock cylinder in place. I've got my little snap ring pliers right here and we're just gonna fit it right onto the little slot right here. Make sure we get it on that groove and there we have it, perfect. Now we're just gonna reinstall the little face plate that goes on the front and this one's just held in with a little screw right there. Make sure you line it up right there and then we'll put our little screw and we're ready to reinstall this in the vehicle. Oh, and by the way, because I know some of you guys are going to say, oh, what's up with that key? How come there's no head on it? Well, basically, this is an MFK blade. And so what we use are MFK heads. And so right here is where I keep the Hyundai Kia style heads. So you guys can see I have different brands, um, different style, like the Mitsubishi, General Motors, uh, Ford, all the different uh, styles. And so this is where I keep the Hyundai Kia. And so... Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to stick the blade into this little slot right here. And then this is the other half of the shell. So let's go ahead and assemble this key. So we're just going to take this side of the head. And we're going to stick the key into the slot right there. And then I like to just push down on it. Make sure you get it all the way in there. Okay, so we've got the first half of our head on the blade. Now, basically what this gives you are little slots so that you can put a transponder chip in here. Uh, again, this is a Kia, so there's no transponder or chip that goes in the key. So we're just going to put the other half of the shell on there and then we're going to clamp it together. So there we have our brand new key. Let's go ahead and put this lock cylinder back into the truck. Okay, so we're going to start by plugging in the electrical connector, which by the way, this is not for any type of transponder. This is not a transponder ring. This is basically just for uh, the light that goes around this uh, lock cylinder. And then also, I believe for the uh, computer to know that the key is in the lock cylinder. So that's what these two uh, connectors or wires are. They are not for the transponder chip. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this back in like so. There we go. Then we're gonna go ahead and stick our lock cylinder back into the housing. We just need to make sure to line this up properly and make sure it goes back in the same way you took it out. And actually, you know what? Before I push this all the way back in, my dumb self forgot to put the little screw that goes on the little plastic shroud. So let me put that little screw back on there. No big deal. Let me just pull it back out. I'm just being real with you guys. 100%. I make mistakes too, so don't think that I'm perfect. I'm just like the rest of us, doing the best I can. So now that we have that screw, uh, holding the plastic ring on we can go ahead and push this back into the slot there we go it's nice and secured let's pull the key out and now let's go ahead and test the ignition we'll turn the ignition on so everything's coming on and then we're going to try to start the vehicle up vehicle starts right up it runs again no transponder chip in the key so there's no reason to program it and now we have a completely different key so just to show you this is the original key we put it in there. I'm gonna try to turn it. You guys can see it does not turn the lock. So this key is now trash. And we have a new key. Turns perfectly. And the truck starts right up. Only thing left to do now is we need to pull out the lock cylinder from the door, which if I'm not mistaken, I think I'm gonna have to remove the door panel for this one. I do see there's a little screw right here to pop this little 
cover off, but I don't know if we can pull the lock cylinder from the outside. We may have to remove the door panel. So let me do a little research and digging around and see how we can get this lock cylinder out. 11 minutes later. All right, guys, so fast forward. Um, I've got the lock cylinder out. Now, basically, I did have to remove the entire door handle so that we can get uh, to the lock cylinder. And that did require the removal of the door panel, which honestly, it wasn't too difficult. There's a few screws that go around. The only thing that did confuse me were these little, uh, um, they're like little caps. Let me show you. So these little screws right here, they went on the edge and they have these little caps. Well, it's a, basically it's a washer, but it had a little rubber cap that covered the screw. And so it took me a little while to figure out that you had to pop the center cap off in order to gain access to the screw. Uh, so that you can remove this whole piece because if you break this piece uh, that's what actually holds the door panel on so you don't want to break this little plastic round piece um, anyway so again i did have to remove the uh, door handle it wasn't too bad there's basically two rods right here uh, each are held on with a clip so from the inside you just kind of swing the clip open and then you can pull the rod out and then there is this little sensor that's just uh, held on with two clips right here onto the lock cylinder so once you get it uh off you can just go ahead and pop that off now we can go ahead and uh disassemble this lock cylinder so we're going to remove it from the door handle you can see this is where it's uh lining up with that hole we're basically just going to twist it like that and then now we should be able to pull it out let me pull it out there we go so there is our lock cylinder and let's go ahead and uh move to the back of the truck and we'll see if we can take this thing apart all right guys so let me apologize i think I may have just lost the recording of me disassembling this lock cylinder. I don't know what happened. I was recording and then all of a sudden my phone went blank. I don't know if it overheated because of the sun. I don't see the recording that I made of me disassembling this lock cylinder. So I'm really upset right now because I was hoping to show you guys the whole process. And not only that, I was filming it for my own benefit because you know, in case I don't remember how to put it back together, I always have the video. So anyways, I got the lock cylinder out. You guys can see the wafers are right here. And uh, this is the outer shell. And so basically what I had to do was, uh, first of all, I had to take off this little aluminum cap that went on the front. It's just got two little crimps in there. You just kind of bend them upwards and then pop the little cap off. Then on the back side, there's a little E-clip. We removed that. Then we were able to slide this. Uh, there was also another spring back here. And then on top of that, uh, you got to be really careful because there's this little uh, piece that goes on the front. It's the shutter door for the lock cylinder and there's a spring in there. So you don't want to lose any of those pieces. But anyways, we're down to the lock cylinder here. And so I'm going to go ahead and swap the wafer. So again, we're going to be swapping the third wafer over with the sixth wafer. So here's our third wafer. So there's our wafer right there. You can see it's a number one. I don't know if that shows up on the camera right there number one so we're going to be swapping that out make sure the spring doesn't fall out i'm going to flip it over and we're going to be swapping it out with the sixth one which is this one right here so let me go ahead and pull it up there's our number three hopefully you guys can see that number three right there and so we're going to go ahead put this wafer in its place flip it around and we're going to put this wafer in the other place and so now we'll go ahead and take our new key we're going to stick it into the cylinder and we're going to make sure that everything is flush so you guys can see all of these wafers are nice and flush that's a good uh recode right there so now let's go ahead and reassemble this thing so i got to figure out how this shutter went back on the front right here so there was this little door that went on the front and that little door sat if i'm not mistaken it went something like this right there so you guys can see the little door hopefully that's showing up on the camera so there's that little door right there then there's a spring and i believe the spring went right in here and so that's what holds the door in the closed position so i think the spring goes underneath the door right here let me see if i can figure out how it went in there okay so there's two little kind of indentations in there i think that's where the legs of the spring are going to go into and then the spring basically just kind of pushes the door upwards. I know it's kind of hard to explain and I don't know if you guys can see it on the camera, but we're going to put this little door back in there. Yeah, so that holds the door. That thing's getting ready to fly out, so I got to put the cover on it. Oh, 
Okay guys, so that was pretty difficult to do. <laughs> Get this little shutter door back on there correctly. So basically, um, I don't know if you guys could see, but there's a little spring in there and you kind of have to position the spring because you know the job of the spring is to really push that shutter door closed. And so you kind of got to be able to get the shutter door on there and then put the cap without it falling apart. And so I guess the best tip that I can give you was the way I finally got it on was instead of trying to put the spring, then the shutter door on top of the spring and then putting the cap on it or the cover, it's easier to just set the spring in there and put the little door onto the cover and then put the cover with the door on to the, the lock cylinder like together and then line it up and then uh, just kind of crimp it back in place. So hopefully that makes sense, but yeah. Next time, uh, just try to not let this thing fall apart because, um, you know, if you don't have to mess with this, it makes this a lot easier and a lot quicker because I would have been done a long time ago if I hadn't run into this problem here. Anyways, let me go ahead and put the rest of this back together. So we're gonna stick this back into the cylinder. Like I said, the lock cylinder goes in this way and then we're gonna go ahead and put our spring on the back side. All right, guys, so I've got the lock cylinder put back together. You can see um, the spring is installed and the key is in there and you can see all of the wafers are flat. Uh, anyways, I just need to put this little arm back on the uh, back of the lock cylinder here. I'm sorry, my camera keeps overheating and cutting off on me. So I think at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and put everything back together, show you the finished product and then we'll go from there. All right guys, so I've got everything back together. Now the final test, I've got the key right here. Let's go ahead and stick it into the lock cylinder and we're gonna lock the door. So right now, oh, wrong way, sorry. <laughs> door locks this way, my bad. So door is locked then we turn it the other way door unlocks and door open so our job here is done actually guys off camera the customer did uh, request a remote so i went ahead and i generated this x horse uh, remote and so as you guys can see i went ahead and programmed it so the doors lock and then they unlock so now the doors unlock so the remote works and also the hatch in the back works so if i hold the button you guys can see the hatch in the back is working right now and so yeah, we now have a fully functioning remote. Anyways, guys, well, there you have it. That's how you rekey a lock cylinder on one of these Kias and Hyundais. Like I said, this wasn't an instructional how-to video. I just basically kind of wanted to give you guys an idea of what's involved in the process. Anyway, like I always say, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you found it useful, informational, educational, entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.